If, like me, you're a fan of all things spooky, you are really going to enjoy today's Realms Lore episode. I am Ivan of Many Realms, and in this Realms Lore video, Ed Greenwood is here to tell us all about some of the most interesting and honestly some of the most downright wacky vampires lurking around the realms today. There are some unexpected ones on this list. If you're enjoying these Realms Lore videos, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any, and share it around. Send it to a player or a GM you really care about. And if you want to get your hands on some super cool new adventuring gear, be sure to check out Ed Greenwood's shop. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. These are my most interesting vampires of the world of D&D, that is, the realms. And this next one is a tongue twister right from the start. Glorander Ophicles is an ambitious adult male black dragon from Laracond. Now you know why he had the name he had, okay. Who was exploring Chult and its vicinity in Faerun when the second sundering began. Not realizing the true nature of what was happening around them as the sundering commenced, certain liches who inhabited sunken ruins in Rathild, studying magic to make themselves far more powerful, caught sight of the dragon and decided to magically tame him to be their steed. Glorander Ophicles objected. A mighty battle ensued. The dragon devoured one of the liches and was struck by several spells simultaneously cast by the others, one of them translocating a captive Mind Witness, yes, the monster, Mind Witness, into the dragon's maw to attack him from within. The result, when the roiling chaos faded, was that only two liches survived by fleeing. The Mind Witness and the other liches had been devoured, and their devourer, Glander Ophicles, was now a vampire dragon. His eyes now glow red. He retains his draconic powers and hit points, but has gained all of the abilities and weaknesses, aside from sunlight, hypersensitivity, mind you, uh, of a vampire, including the ability to magically call swarms of bats, rats, or wolves. By day, he naps from time to time, sometimes gliding on the wing, that is, riding thermals aloft, and in sunlight, he feels lassitude, but needn't rest more deeply than that. He often banishes this feeling by taking to water and swimming or drifting until nightfall. If he doesn't slay a foe, his bite often transforms them into vampire spawn loyal to him. Though this doesn't seem to work on other dragons he's fought with since. Glander Ophicles retains the cunning desire to inspire fear and lust to rule lesser creatures by intimidation of his kind, and now swoops on wild herds on the Shar to feed at will, and terrorizes nomads, hissing at them that they should worship him as the true god that he is, and do his bidding. He hates liches and any group of wizards he espies, most often Zentrim or red wizard forces that include mages, and will attack such savagely, rending them utterly. He's beginning to ponder if he should seek to conquer and rule a human city somewhere, or if that would be too much trouble, interrupting his carefree life of raiding and terrorizing. Yet, yet, he wants to do something important and be deeply feared by many. Without much work to achieve that, and certainly no recurring large effort, oh no, 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 perhaps his spawn could be coerced into seizing a city for him. If you're enjoying this video, please leave me a like or subscribe. If you want to see other videos in the future, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms Lore, please jaunt out to my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming a protector of the realms. The next one is even more fun. You thought a vampire dragon was over the line? Well, this is Yovel, Yovel the Crimson Flump. Yes, Yovel is a vampire flump, consumed with ever-present simmering rage and self-loathing as it becomes more and more evil. It very recently became a vampire by pouncing on and draining a true vampire magically trapped in rat form somewhere in the Weld Underdark near Skullport. According to Vajra Safar, the Blackstaff, the vampire, a human male, hight Keldin Ovantor, formerly a Vathkatla, 
was bound into rat form by an archmage who intended to introduce it into a Waterdavian noble compound to bite and transform all of the nobles and their servants into vampire spawn for experimental purposes of his own that would be funded by his drawing down of the noble family's wealth. The vampire, however, escaped and fell victim to the hungry flump before the Archmage could find and recapture it. Yoval retains all of its flump powers and abilities and has gained all vampire powers and weaknesses, save that it has no coffin, doesn't have to rest, though it has taken to drifting slowly, aimlessly, and silently around caverns for random periods of time as vampirism takes hold and suffers no sunlight hypersensitivity. It has become crimson due to anger and evil nature, and it shuns the company of other flump, acting embarrassed rather than aggressive towards them. Always amongst the most curious and boldest of flump, hence its wandering so near to Skullport, the Oval is now taking an increasing interest in the doings of humans, drow, and others underwater deep, and is lurking around Skullport and Undermountain. It seems fascinated by the deeds of adventurers, and it will follow and observe them from a distance for long hours, as if it finds them gripping entertainment. If it feels threatened by any large group of beings that attacks it, or any spells hurled its way at all, it will turn into mist and try to flee as quickly as it can, seeking cover if possible as it does so. Magic use and powerful magic items also draw Yovel's attention though it seems aware of the peril of getting caught in the spell and will dart behind cover to peer from more safety, retreat a good distance, or even flee if danger seems high. Vajra believes that if it feeds on creatures but doesn't kill them, getting interrupted in draining rats and other small underdark creatures, they could well become vampire spawn, loyal to Yovel and do its bidding, following it doggedly if it ignores or is unaware of them. Recently, Yovel's observed behavior suggests that it has begun persistently hunting for something, likely something of a portable size that humans or others may be carrying. It often glides out of hiding to pace parties, moving about in the Underdark, peering intently at each being in turn from various angles paying more attention to their gear than their bodies, and then moving to survey the next. What it seeks, Yovel hasn't yet revealed to anyone. Now we come to the last of our vampires. Locke Lebranth is a vampire mimic that became a vampire when it swallowed a true vampire whole and was then struck by powerful slaying spells hurled by an archmage who'd seen the vampire plunge into the chest to hide from him and wanted to destroy it before it could shift into mist form and escape. Neither this wizard nor the vampire had any idea that the chest that the vampire had sought refuge in happened to be a mimic and an unusual one at that. Years before, Locke Lebrance had devoured a gem that contained the soul of a Netherese archwizard, Locke Lebrance who'd so damaged his body in a magical blast, uh, his own spell experiment gone awry, that his apprentices magically bound his mind into a gem, somewhat like an elven Kira, to preserve what they could of him, in hopes that he could be given a new body. They never succeeded in this, and the gem eventually went missing, got eaten by the mimic when it ate a thief that was carrying it, and over time, the somewhat deranged mind of the archwizard fused with that of the mimic, and the one became the other. The mimic is now a pettish and cranky creature, able to speak, read, and understand common, undercommon, loros, and neveries. It can cast spells, which seem to return to its memory a day or so after casting, but its castings often go wrong, causing well magical effects that surprise the mimic as much as they do others. Locke Lebrance retains all of its mimic's powers and abilities, and has gained all vampire powers and weaknesses, uh, save again that it has no coffin and doesn't have to rest. It does, 
take radiant damage from sunlight. It has taken to turning into bat or mist form, the bat being fat, ungainly when flying, and as big as an adult human head, to move about, rather than extending pseudopods and dragging itself along, as mimics usually do. Locke Lebrand's personality seems on the ascendant in the melded creature, for the mimic has become as restless as the Netherese archwizard had been in life. He was wont to pace back and forth when thinking and go for long walks. So, Locke Lebrand now moves about often, going on long journeys that seem purposeful when observed on the move, but wandering when it comes to destination. As a result, Locke Lebrance, formerly a resident of the upper levels of Undermountain, can now be found just about anywhere up and down the Sword Coast and along the Heartland trade routes as far as Cormier, Sembia, and Westgate. Converse it's had with adventurers it encountered but didn't seek to devour or fight suggests that it's seeking spell books, spell scrolls, and magic items that store spells so that what remains within it of Loch Lebran can gain new to him or updated spells to wield. Beyond that, if it has any aims in life beyond devouring its next meal, Loch Lebran hasn't revealed yet. Welcome back to Realmspeak. This time around, we're doing this. Janassi. That's how it's pronounced. Janassi. Janassi, to most common folk in the realms, the the humans, elves, half-elves, dwarves, gnomes, halflings, all of the people who live together in, quote, the civilized, unquote, realms, Janassi are weird creatures, as in, there are so many conflicting legends about them, tall tales, tavern tales, that people don't know what to believe. You know, how much magic do they have? Do they, do they all go around on flying carpets? Are they all, like, bald except for long pigtails and all have gold earrings through piercings in various weird parts of their bodies? Those are the things people aren't quite sure about, or they argue about, or they... The tales all conflict, so they don't know what to believe. So, if you have Janassi walking on stage, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise, in details anyway, to anybody who's just like a common person in the realms. So if you want to describe yours slightly differently, hey... You'll be like everybody else in the realms. Oh, that's Janassi. Oh, okay. Where something Elminster doesn't know the details of, slew Trellar and left Rorndral as a vampire who has two magic daggers embedded deep in his body. He's in constant agony from their movements within him, and he can't wield them as weapons, but benefits from their powers, which are Featherfall, spell turning and transmitted from Rondrel's body when he wills these powers to emanate 